I want to get some of the concerning news out of the way because what you say really does matter for aluminium markets in general and investors concerned about the issue of the Alanorte refinery in Brazil and the injunctions there. So I want to know about the progress with the Brazilian authorities and what your view is on when Norsk Hydro can return to 100% production in Alanorte. Yes, uh, Alanorte is now operating at 50% capacity and uh, that uh, represents uh, both 5% uh, of the uh, gl uh, global uh, alumina capacity outside China. There's no out of operation, so that has an impact on the global alumina market. And uh, uh, the progress is that uh, we have a constructive dialogue with authorities. We have uh, also uh, signed agreements uh, with uh, the authorities in Brazil uh, related to terms of adjusted conduct, also social agreements. So I think uh, we also, with, uh, with the robustness we are now also showing, uh, I think we, we are very eager to, to start and we are ready to start and uh, we have uh, the best people on board. Uh, so uh, we, uh, we don't know exactly the timing here, but uh, we are working day and night to resume full op production. Look, Sven, uh, uh, good morning to you. It's Manus in Dubai. That's going to be good news for the markets of the Capital Investor Day, that you've got that kind of constructive rhetoric. But what about your targets for 2019? Will uh, Alanote affect your targets for 2019? Are you going to say to the market, I can stick or beat my targets for 2019 as a result of this today? Well, with uh, the timeline we are following now with regard to uh, the project that uh, we are working on in Brazil, we uh, are ready to, uh, to start. We can operate uh, Alunort uh, safely and uh, responsibly going forward. But uh, with the dialogue we have to have now with the authorities, we also have uh, let them take the time that is necessary to make their decision. So for Hydro as a company, we are ready to start. Given the supply disruption at Alanorte, how tight would you say the global aluminium market is right now? Well, the, uh, if you think about the raw material, alumina, that is the input material for the alum aluminium metal production, uh, there, there is a tight market. Uh, also due to the fact that there, there are uh, introduced sanctions against Rusal, which is another player in this market. Uh, but we, they got to aluminium as a metal, uh, that uh, is, uh, the demand is growing, it's, it's the fastest growing uh, base metal in the world and uh, we are very happy for the market development there. We also see a, a better balance. Uh, in fact, there is a, a global deficit in the global aluminium market mm -hmm. uh, after several years of surplus. Um, let's just dig a little bit deeper into that because Alcoa said that global demand uh, for them, they are concerned about global aluminium demand slowing as a result of trade wars. The IMF are warning that the pace of the slowdown in the world is perhaps a little bit worse than they thought originally. You're at the front end of this queue. What can you tell me about demand in the past six to eight weeks? Has there been any faltering of demand for your product? Well, we, uh, we see that the demand uh, for 2018 will be around 3 to 4%. Uh, next year we are expecting 2 to 3 percent growth. Uh, there will be slower growth in, in China, but uh, aluminium is a very important material for the modern society and uh, there are several driving forces which uh, leads to higher demand in aluminium. So we are quite uh, satisfied with the market development and uh, we are very well prepared to supply our customers also for the coming years. What impact is the trade war having on the market and on your business? Well, the uh, U.S. introduced 10% uh, uh, import duty of aluminium and what has happened in the U.S. market is that uh, the standard ingot premium has uh, increased uh, to, and the increase is corresponding to the 10% uh, tariffs. So it means that uh, the customers in the U.S. are paying more for the metal. Uh, we are selling metal uh, from Hydro to, from our plant in uh, Qatar to the North America and U.S. market and we have the same margins today as it was before the, the duty was introduced. So it is uh, also a situation where our extrusion plants in the U.S. market is uh, paying a higher price for the metal, but we are also selling the metal to a higher price. So in the end, it looks like it will be the end users in the U.S. that are going to pay for this. You mentioned China there. I want to get a sense of, of how robust or indeed uh, the strength of the China demand. 
Yes, we, uh, we see that the demand in China is going down. There has been oversupply in China for several years, but uh, we also see that there is an improvement in the supply-demand balance in China uh, due to the fact that there have been taken out uh, quite a lot of production during last year. There are introduced uh, capacity quotas in China, which means that there are less new capacity coming on board, which is also healthy. So when we look at the su supply-demand balance, uh, in the world uh, next year. There will be a small surplus in China, but a substantial deficit outside China. And uh, all in all, there will be a, between one to one and a half million tons deficit globally in aluminium. So it will be a tight market. Svein, just a, a quick final question on uh, your sort of key markets. Do you see any slowdown in the car industry, in construction, again, partially linked to trade? Well, if you look at the U.S. market, uh, we have expected that uh, there could be a slowdown in the building and construction market uh, or in automotive. We see, it, uh, up to now, quite strong development. Uh, we see, in, uh, especially in the heavy truck and trailer market, a very strong demand. And here, there is supplying into all these market segments. We are the largest integrated aluminium company outside China. And we have full integration for home materials to solutions. So we are delivering into the assembly lines to the automotive customers. We are delivering to building and construction. So so we see uh, the market intelligence we get is that uh, there is still growth in the building and construction market in the US, also in Europe. Mm -hmm. In Europe, slower and lower than, than in the US, but the automotive market in the US is uh, moving forward. Not uh, necessarily depending on, uh, for us, depending on the number of cars, but the substitution is very important because light weighting of cars is a very important strategy for our customers. Sven, taking everything that you've just said there, aluminium is below $2,000. It's going to find it hard to get above. <laughs> Do you think that we're capped at $2,000? Try and give us a bandwidth of where you think prices are going to go. Uh, as we now see that uh, there is a deficit uh, this year uh, in the supply demand globally, and there will be a deficit also next year. Uh, we see the global inventories are going down. Inventory days now are approaching the same level as we had before the finance crisis. So all in all, there are several factors that uh, now tends towards a more balanced market. And uh, uh, we are quite optimistic with regard to the market going forward. And demand continues at a high level. So we'll break $2,000, will we? I'm not speculating <laughs> on prices, so uh, let's see what happens. <laughs>